Good morning. Welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church of Columbus, Georgia. We're glad that you're here to join us as we worship God by offering our prayers and singing songs and listening to scripture. Please come in with us that we may worship God together. Our first lesson today comes from the Exodus, and it can be found in chapter 12, the first 14 verses, and this speaks to the first Passover that took place. And listen now to the Word of God. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. And your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male, and you may take it from the sheep or from the goats." You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the doorposts and the lintel of the houses on which they eat it. And they shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its heads and legs and inner organs." And you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. And this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night. I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. And all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Invite you to stand in body or in spirit. For our second lesson, it comes from Luke's gospel. As we hear words from the Last Supper, listen now to the Word of God. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. And Jesus said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Come to the table. How many crossroads, landmarks, milestones, or simply memorable moments of your life have taken place at a meal table? It could be in the dining room, an eat-in kitchen, maybe in the den. 
the breakfast room at a picnic table, where at a meal table, wherever it was, has a milestone, a, a, a memorable moment, a landmark, a crossroad taken place. It could be a birthday meal. It could be a holiday meal. Maybe it was at a table that you had a serious conversation about a special relationship, about an upcoming marriage, about a job offer or job loss or job change. What has taken place at a table? As I prepared the message for this week, many tables have come to my mind and events that took place, sharing a significant um, life event with a friend at their breakfast table, or even doing my homework at the dining room table uh, at home as a child, and even came to mind typing a paper. Some of us remember typing, manual, you know, bang, 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 whack, bang, 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 whack, and writing out a paper uh, for a high school English class. So much seems to happen at a table. Today at this table, we are reminded of what Christ has done. This is a table with history. It reminds us of lots of history. Again, as I pondered tables, I remembered one from my great-grandparents' house. I knew one set of great-grandparents, my mother's mother's parents. And I remember seeing the dining, in their dining room that table and pictures from celebrating a few birthdays there. And I remember after my great-grandmother had passed away and the home was sold and broken up, we had our last meal. It came from Hardee's. I'll go ahead and give them free advertising. We were packing up. You couldn't cook anything in there. <laughs> and we ate, and it went to my Aunt Nancy. And then later when she hosted self-family get-togethers, once again, we came to that table. Aunt Nancy passed away, and now it belongs to one of her children. And we have also gathered as a family at that table, third house, but still bound by that. These tables have the history, but they also remind us that we have a place at a table. Some of you have listened uh, when we had the, um, the Holy Cow survey, and the gentleman spoke about it and talked about gatherings that will follow as we look at that material, and talked about ways of being inviting, and he talked about his experiences as a middle school principal and the power of the school table. Some, all are welcome, some are not. But here, we are reminded of welcome, that we belong. And at this table, we will be served. It connects us historically. We are part of something larger, the larger church. And here at this table, we will meet with Jesus Christ and be fed and nourished by Him. This sacrament began at a table and at a meal. It began as Jesus celebrated the Passover with His disciples. Earlier, I read that passage from Exodus as the Passover was initiated. And on into Leviticus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, all of them make reference to the sacrament and let them know, the people know, that you must celebrate this. As faithful Jews looked back at their history, they viewed their history through the Exodus. Think about it today. We all have events in our life through which we interpret the larger story of our lives. For some people, the university years were very formative. And actually, as I began my time at UNC, I had some advice from my daddy that guided my steps. For some, it is an incident, a positive incident with a mentor or a parent 
something through which you went and that person was there for you and words of advice that was given to you. And that experience helps you interpret the larger story of your life. As a pastor, I look to my Uncle Sam and to the gentleman who supervised me X number of summers ago in Spartanburg, South Carolina, Gene Lasseter. We all have events in our life that help us define our lives, even professionally. It could be a case of, I wanted to be a teacher because of the experience with this particular teacher. And that teaching ministry profession inspired me and guided me in the way to go. We all have those events. And Passover was the event for them that brought them back to what had happened. At Passover, a lamb without blemish, a perfect lamb is sacrificed. And at the first one, the blood covered the house. Well, was marked on the house that they would be spared that plague. And after the plague, they were released and were let to go. There are other, th- other elements to the Passover. The celebration came over time. Eventually, there were some ceremonial drinks from a cup, which we see evidence of that in, in Jesus as He celebrates, each of them having their own meaning. After that Passover, of which I read in Luke's Gospel, Jesus, the perfect lamb without sin, without blemish, was sacrificed for us. And we are covered by his blood that death will pass over us. At this table, we remember Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross and his payment for our sins. And we are reconnected to that table back then in Jerusalem. We are reminded of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And at this table, we celebrate that we belong. We belong to the body of Christ, the church universal. Some of you may have read the book, Cold Sassy Tree, uh, published in 1984. The author, Olive Burns, based the novel on real-life events set in the early 1900s in the town that became Commerce, Georgia. And I think all of us at one point have been through Commerce. I heard a pastor speak once about the Presbyterian church she served in that area. In fact, descendants of characters in that novel actually populate that church. She served a small and very faithful and historic church. The plates and cups they used for communion dated back to before the war between the states. And each time they celebrated the Lord's Supper, they ate and they drank from plates and cups that saw soldiers off to numerous wars. And those soldiers, those who came back, ate again from those same cups and plates. Parents and grandparents and great-grandparents were served from those utensils. They all belonged. And not only that, they celebrated communion in the old Scottish tradition where they sat at special communion tables. They were long and narrow. Imagine our table up here divided in half, okay? that kind of width, long, laid out in the congregation. It was small, so they could, they could make, it, make it happen. And so you're taking communion, but you're sitting side by side and pretty well across, close across from people, members of your church. And she said, it was interesting that you knew, even if you had a difference of opinion with somebody in an upcoming meeting, I'm sitting this close to that person. <laughs> at communion. It helped in the discussions that would come about from time to time. Today, we remember the sacrifice of Jesus, and we celebrate our place at the table. And today, we have an opportunity to meet with Jesus in a significant way. 
Today, we get a sense of being at home with Jesus Christ. You may have heard this definition of home. Home is the place that if you have to go there, they have to take you in. I always like that definition. And we come to this table as a foretaste of what it means to be at home in the kingdom. Here today, Jesus seeks to meet you wherever you are in your walk with Him. Our Savior seeks to meet us. I looked at our creeds, our confessions, part of our foundation of what we believe, and what were the words said about communion. Here are some that stood out to me. From the second Helvetic, by this sacred rite, the Lord wishes to keep in fresh remembrance that greatest benefit which He showed to mortal men, namely, that by having given His body and shed His blood, He has pardoned all our sins and redeemed us from eternal death and the power of the devil, and now feeds us with His flesh and gives us His blood to drink, which being spiritually received spiritually by true faith, nourishes us to eternal life. For even as bodily food and drink not only refresh and strengthen our bodies, but also keeps them alive, so the flesh of Christ delivered for us and His blood shed for us not only, not only refresh and strengthens our souls, but also preserves them alive. And finally, from the Heidelberg Catechism, Jesus wants to teach us that just as bread and wine nourish the temporal body, the temporal life, the physical body, so too His crucified body and poured out blood are the true food and drink of our souls for eternal life. But more important, He wants to assure us by this visible sign and pledge that we, through the Holy Spirit's work, share in His true body and blood as surely as our mouths receive these holy signs in His remembrance, that all of His suffering and obedience are as definitely ours as if we personally had suffered and made satisfaction for our sins. He is here today to meet with you. Today, you are invited to a table, connected to a table hundreds of years and thousands of miles away in Jerusalem. You are connected to that table to remember the sacrifice, to fellowship with one another, and to meet Jesus Christ. Today, let us come to the table and let us meet our Savior. Amen. It's been a privilege to join you this day in worship. We're glad that you were here. First Presbyterian Church seeks to serve and minister in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor. Go in peace as you love and serve God.